a word that has suited me for a long time, for decades, since the first time I heard it, is the following. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Perhaps you might have heard this word before, that you find in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. Evil company corrupts good habits. Do not be deceived. In other words, don't think that this will not happen to you. Do not be deceived. Don't fill yourself with arrogance by thinking that with me, I can talk to anyone about anything and that will not influence me. The warning is given. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Let's unbox, per se, this text. Let's understand what he said. Everyone has good habits and bad habits too. The majority of what we do every day comes from habits. You sleep on the same side of the bed, you wake up at the same time in the morning, in the morning you do the same things, you take the same routes to work. Everyone lives by habits, we eat the same food. Anyway, more than 90% of what we do is a habit. And you could even say, this is a habit of mine. I will never let go of it. But the text is showing us that there's something more powerful than a habit. Only those who have tried to break or to quit a bad habit knows how hard it is. Those who tried to quit smoking or to stop eating certain food that harms them, only they know how hard it is to break a bad habit. But the holy text is saying that a power greater than habit is the power of the evil company. When you have a conversation inclined toward evil, contrary to what you are used with, this conversation, in other words, these words that come out of your mouth and the ones that enter through the years by the mouth of others, they have power, both the ones who enter and the ones who come out. Words have power. Power, maybe not at the first conversation, but little by little, these words have power to ruin the structures of even of a person of great character. The evil company, evil conversations can ruin, destroy the good habits. Little by little, the person starts to open their mind for other ideas, wrong ideas, and they start to abandon the good habits. This is the warning that the Word gives us. And I have seen many who were good people, of good character, people who did wonderful things, good friends, good company, and suddenly being unaware or with this arrogance of thinking, this does not work with me, I can have any conversation, I can expose myself to any company, I don't let myself be influenced. I've seen many going towards a path that led them to abandon the good habits and that might have involved betrayal from the partner, abandonment of the faith, betrayal of their own character, the person did something that they've never imagined they would ever do because they started engaging in bad conversations with others. This is a poison. By the way, how did the first human being, the woman, fall in Eden? 
Was it not through a bad conversation? Was it not through a bad conversation that the serpent managed to induce Eve what she was already not determined to do? A bad conversation can change good habits. A bad conversation can corrupt you. That is why if you have sense, if you want to keep your character, your marriage, your conduct, your faith in God intact, then you must avoid. Just as one who avoids a past, you must avoid evil company. In any shape or form, you must. Whether in the privacy of your room, with your husband or wife, or on the phone with your best friend, or on the internet, in chat rooms, or direct messages, whatever it is, even through a fake profile. And you know, there's not such a thing as a fake profile. The fake profile that the person creates is the person themselves. They pretend to be something, but it's just what they practice through a fake profile. So whatever is the means, do not engage in evil company unless you want to corrupt your good habits. On the other hand, we can also understand that if bad conversations can corrupt good habits, the good conversations can repair bad habits. If you want to change your life, if you want to change your behavior, how you behave, how you are as a person, you have to look for people who will talk to you to take you to a higher level. Conversations that take you higher. Conversations of wisdom, of intelligence, of counsel. You will look for people that will add to you and will lead you to start to abandon your bad habits. When you start to talk good conversations, good topics with someone who is a little ahead of you, then these good conversations start to reflect in your habits and conduct. By the way, King Solomon spoke about that in Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise. Look at this. He who walks with wise men will be wise. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. That's it. He's saying the same thing. Evil company corrupts good habits. In other words, if you associate yourself with a fool, with someone who only vomits hatred, complaints, criticism, malice, evil words, murmuring, they only vomit evil things, because it's what is inside of them. If you associate yourself with such a person, you will be destroyed, you will be corrupted, just as the good orange is contaminated by the rotten one. But if you walk with a wise person, the wisdom of the wise will start to affect you, start making you a more wise person who aims for more noble things. But how can I walk with a wise person? First, walk with God, the source of all wisdom. Fear God, because the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. Fear God above all, because those who fear God don't engage in bad conversations regardless of the situation. Even if you erase it, because today, People engage in bad conversations, they say, delete what I sent you, please cooperate with me, please do that for me, delete what I sent you. When you don't engage in bad conversations, you don't ever have to erase or delete anything. Did you understand? 
first walk with God, the wisest, because the fear of God makes you avoid evil company in any situation, even if nobody will ever find out. Second, look for people who are truly wise and not the popular wisdom because they know how to speak or give advice. Because internet has become a place of coaches and gurus. Everybody has good advice. But look for people who practice the advice they preach to help what they are saying. Because you can be deceived. Even though the word might be good, but the messenger is a deceiver. So be wise and run away from the deceivers. Don't be deceived. Run away from those who pull you to bad conversations. They vomit hatred. They plant in you malice and bad thoughts. Run away from these people and associate yourself with those who are truly of God. They show fear of God in everything they do, especially in their own words. They have practical wisdom. They practice what they are saying. Thus, have a lot to add to you, to enrich you and pass a little of this wisdom that they have in them. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.